welcome you ladies and gentlemen to the annual Memorial Day ceremony here at historic Mount Zion Cemetery. I'm going to, uh, each of you should have a program if you don't put your hands up and one of our board members will see that you get one. The first uh, item on the agenda, the next item, will be the invocation, and that will be rendered by Reverend Albert Gaither, a member of the Board of Directors of Mount Zion Cemetery Association. Reverend Gaither. God of grace and God of mercy, we thank you, dear Lord, for a day that was not promised to us. We thank you, Lord, for the sunshine after last night's rain. But Lord, more importantly, we, we just want to say thank you for all of those that have served in our various wars and those that are lying right before us. We thank you, Lord, for this Memorial Day, our veterans who thought it's not robbery to come here and to be a part of this service. We thank you for this Mount Zion Cemetery Association and its leadership. Pray, Lord, that we may continue to be inspired to continue to do what needs to be done in this historical cemetery. To all of which we say thank you, thank you, thank you. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Gaither. Uh, at this time, as was really customary back in the day, days of segregation, there was scarcely a program held in the black community did not, which did not open and or close with a saying of lift every voice and sing, or what has popularly been called the black national anthem. And at this time, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Vincent White to come forward to lead us in the singing of the first verse of the black national anthem and it's printed on your program. Good morning. We guys said all that are able to withstand and join with us in singing the first verse of Lift Every Voice and Sing. Lift every voice and sing till earth and any longer we're going to improvise and uh, just uh, kind of go with the flow so I ask uh, your indulgence as we uh, deviate at this point uh, on the program at the very top uh, you see the words drum call and that drum call today which is traditional in African villages when there's a special ceremony or program going on in Africa, the drummers send out their call, and it means that 
everyone come forth. It's time to get started. I do want to thank Brother E.A. and Brother Ayate for giving us a drum call. We're going to move uh, to the item seven on the agenda, the award presentation. And I'd like to ask all of the members of the board of directors of the Mount Zion Cemetery Association to join me here. Ms. Brianna Denby is going to uh, be in charge of this phase of the program. Brianna. Good morning. So this is a small subsection of the board, the newly revived board of the Mount Zion Cemetery. When I came on board, um, we knew that there was a cemetery, we knew that there were cemetery grounds, and we know that they were in a state of disrepair. My role was trying to figure out who the proper owner of the cemetery was, which was the Mount Zion Cemetery Association, and who was on that cemetery association. And so when I started looking into this project back in 20. 13, maybe 14, there were no uh, living board members available. So between myself um, and, and under the auspice of Harmon Carey and Judge um, Alex Smalls, we've revived the board and we've put a lot of board members in place uh, with a different background and experiences to add value to help bring up the cemetery grounds. And so day by day, month by month, when we have our board meetings, we are doing that. So we just want to take a second today to give an award to an individual that has exemplified public service. And we call this award the Public Service Award of Excellence. This individual has been thankless and put in time and dedication and commitment to this cemetery board and helping to revive it. Whether it be meetings, whether it be conversations, this individual didn't just talk the talk, he truly did walk the walk. So today from the Mount Zion Cemetery Board, we want to thank Mr. Tom Gordon. So Tom has known of the state of affairs of this cemetery and has made sure that we've, we've had all the necessary things um, to get the cemetery board revived. Um, so all of that is through the work of the county executive, and we just want to say thank you, thank you. I'll read it to you guys. So this is the Service Award of Excellence awarded to the Honorable Thomas P. Gordon for your continued dedication and commitment to the restoration of the Mount Zion Cemetery, dated today, March 31st, 2016. Tom, will you make some remarks? Does a politician want to make a remark? <laughs> Let me recognize uh, President uh, Penrose Hollins, Newcastle County Council, and Justin Wright, City Council. Thank you for being here. My first exposure to the cemetery as chief of police, one of the bodies had floated out into the apartment complex, part of a body, and we thought we had a homicide. And that's when I learned of the deteriorating condition and shameful conditions that this cemetery was in. I would come here year after year, Harming Terry would be sitting out the back of his truck calling people on the phone to bring in weed whackers to cut the grass down. Last year when we were here, the veterans are here every year, and it looked like they're putting flags on every veteran. It looked like the entire cemetery was veterans. There's 200 plus veterans here so it's something that uh, and again I have to thank County Council because I couldn't have done it without their support Penrose and all of County Council and for the county employees that now help maintain this park and particularly for the veterans you know famous Clifford Brown stands behind me but in front of me are real heroes that made this country just a couple people I want to thank in my department, in addition to Brandon. Uh, Jim McDonald who was dealing with it on a daily basis, and Cheryl McDonough, who helped uh, get Nikki Ferreira, who was going to 
put in a beautiful road here, and that's a very, very expensive gift. And the whole goal here with Harmon and this great board is to make it look like the cemetery across the street. And when we're done, it's going to have a military flagpole lit, and everything's going to be straightened out, and it's going to be a beautiful place to come for a picnic and visit. And I'm very proud of the people that kept it alive, like my friend Harmon and the new board. And it's very seldom can you be involved in something that is so important. And again, I want to thank our vets today on Memorial Day. Thank you very much. Okay, um, we uh, will move now to uh, that portion of the uh, program uh, which uh, calls for me to introduce the speaker. But in the rush of things, the biography that he so uh, kindly brought to my office is still at my office. So I really am not one to... I'm almost going to have to ask him to introduce himself. I do know this about him. He, he so graciously and willingly said that he would come to present the sermonette. Uh, I didn't have to twist his arm in any way. He, he said, I'm honored to do that. And that says volumes about the kind of man our speaker is, the Reverend Dr. John E. Bailey. Reverend Bailey. To Harmon Carey and to all the dignitaries here in their respective places, we do count it a privilege and an honor to be out here today. Uh, most of all, we were running this morning. We were at the Memorial Bridge. We had to do the prayer there. Then we had to get on the iron horse and come down this way. But we're happy to be here. And we're happy to serve uh, the country. I've been serving in the Marine Corps for 27 years, do tours of Vietnam been wounded a couple of times, but we did serve. It was not always a good pleasure to serve. It was difficult at that time, but we thank God he brought us through. I'm not going to be before you long. I'm just I'm an in and out preacher, so. <laughs> so gird yourself. Don't wink. Don't blink your eyes too quick. <laughs> I just want to bring something to remembrance. Also, I'm a member of Canaan Baptist Church, where the Reverend Dr. Christopher Allen Bullock is the pastor. I just want to bring us something to your remembrance. Maybe some of you know, and maybe some of you do not. But our scripture from Psalm 23. So it says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Military men in 1940s had a difficult time trying to serve. Eleanor Roosevelt was one of our famous persons who led the black man into all of the military services who were shut out and were not allowed. And some of them were the Buffalo Soldiers and the Tuskegee Airmen. Some of those were the Mumford Point Marines. Some served on Navy ships, but they were not allowed to handle guns because they felt they were incompetent to handle guns. So they had to stand in the boiler room in the bottom of the ship and shovel coal to keep the ships going. They had to serve in the dining halls with all of the officers shining shoes and swabbing the decks in order to be in the service. But we did it. We stayed there. We worked hard. Many out in this cemetery of military men who gave their lives in the 1941, 42, and 43 had served their country and gave their life. Finally, when we had a chance, uh, Sister Eleanor Roosevelt asked to be taken up into one of the fighter planes. And uh, she was uh, wanted to go up with a, a black man. But some of the officers denied that. She said, no, 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 you send me up in this. I am the first lady of the country. I'm going up with this man here. And when she went up, she found out that these guys were the best flyers there ever were. 
the Tuskegee Airmen never lost a plane, never lost a bomber, and did their job respectfully and died for their country. And I applaud them today, the Tuskegee Airmen. Also, the Muscle Point Marines were many people never heard about those guys. There's a place called in uh, Jackson, North Carolina, it's called Camp Lejeune. Uh, and Camp Lejeune behind it is the Mumford Point Marines, where all of the black Marines train, who were not allowed to eat or be in the kitchens along with the white folks. So they had to serve in the back, and they trained hard. And uh, they were not always uh, up to the point of wanting to serve. But, but we, we had some, some black Marines who pushed them and made them serve and say, you've got pride, you've got dignity, you are a United States Marine Corps. I don't care what nobody else says, but you are allowed to serve in this place. And finally, they went to war in the World War II, and they fought in many of battles there and gave their lives for the Mumford Point Marines. Give our hand. Finally, there was the Buffalo Soldier, that old soldier who fought in the Civil War and fought in World War I and fought in World War II, who was not even allowed to be in the barracks with any white people at all. They were only allowed to live out in the fields. So the Cherokee Indian and the the Apaches gave them a name. They called them the Buffalo Soldier. Ones who uh, gave their lives for their country but were not allowed to sleep in the barracks. But thank God they stood up. They were strong. They were able. They had courage. And they fought. And they believed in their country and died for their country. Give it up for the Buffalo Soldier. And as I come to my close, I just want you to be reminded that though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it's not over. Because God is our helper. He's our creator. He's our savior. He's our master, protector, provider, deliverer, defendant, friend. He is our keeper and our feeder and our leader. Without him, we can do nothing. We're like ships upon the raging sea without a sail. Through my 27 years in the Marine Corps, I took God with me. Don't you take the Lord with you when you go? I took the Lord with me everywhere I went. I got on my knees and said, Lord, I know you're able to bring me through this mess. Hallelujah. One thing I'm glad about is that God never leaves you nor forsake you. Though the shadows of death may look dark sometimes, though the clouds may be weary sometimes, and hell ain't hanging low sometimes, but God is still with you, to walk with you, to talk with you, to be about his business with you. You can make it because he's on your side. Yeah. So all you got to do is trust him and give him time. He'll work everything out. It may seem dark sometimes. It may seem a little dim, but don't worry. Hold on. Have faith in God. For faith without works is dead. Hold on. Carry on. Be good. Be kind to one another. And enjoy the presence what God has given us. And though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil. God bless you. Let's, let's give Reverend... Billy, another hand for that informative and inspiring message. Thank you so much. It's good to be here. And before I begin the, the, the report, let me thank a couple of people. And one of the persons that you really need to thank is Harmon Carey. Because between the time that the Cemetery Association became defunct until we revived it, the Friends of Mount Zion really carried the ball. And that ball was really carried by Harlan Carey, and we can't say enough for what he has done to, of course, put us in a place to move forward. And for that, we say 
things. So we know that we stand on your shoulders when we move forward. A, a second person that we want to thank for their, his leadership and his staff and the county and in itself is uh, Tom Gordon, and I see that the president of county council is here, uh, Penrose Hollins, who's my neighbor, and then a member of city council, who is now my neighbor, uh, uh, Justin and Wright. And those persons have um, been there for us, and Tom's staff. You know, he, Tom has provided leadership, he's provided commitment, and he's provided resources to help us move, move forward. Because this is a legacy. This is a legacy that we have inherited. And so we should do well by those who have left something to us. And we're trying to do that um, every day as we begin to put the cemetery in a place that they would be proud. Because they had to move here because of a, a the decree um, that was by the Longwood Foundation and it caused us to, to move here. And then part of it was sold off, and the department behind us you see represent part of it was sold off. But through all that, we have persevered, we have maintained, we have been, been steadfast here today. Uh, what you see here today now is a sum total of a lot of efforts of uh, some people. And one of the persons I really want to recognize is the president of the, the uh, East Simon Carmel Board of Trustees, Robert Jenkins, who also has been very instrumental in helping us along. We appreciate that. <laughs> what you see today will not be here when you return next year. We hope to do more. Right. And here are the things that's on, on, on the uh, agenda. We now have a, a new um, sort of a very well um, uh, fence. Not a chain link fence, but a rod railing fence. We uh, are able to install that through the, the help and assistance of the county exec and his leadership. We really appreciate that. We also, starting on Tuesday, we will improve the road. The, the contractors are coming in and they will build a new road. The new road will go all the way around and have a turnaround section. So that will, will be in, in, improved. Uh, we, we also have a, a grant from the Distress Cemetery Association from the state of Delaware that will help us to repair the graves and the grave sites. So we've got work going there. So we think that we'll have that done by the next time you visit us next Memorial Day. But you don't have to wait until the Memorial Day to do that. <laughs> Come back anytime. It's really open. And I said, for that, we can't buy that commitment. But you know, that is the commitment that is inherent in what we do as Americans and what we do as veterans. And for that, we appreciate all of the efforts of all the people here, starting with Mr. Kerry and thereafter. Thank you very much. Okay, good. Uh, thank you so much uh, for that update and for that uh, description for the future okay. that uh, he's laid out for us and that with God's help and your support uh, will be uh, successful so that when we come back next year uh, for this observance, hope, hopefully you will see tangible proof that under Judge Small's leadership and with the support of the board and of the community that we have made even more progress. I think this just about winds everything up here. I kind of gave my closing remarks uh, before the judge came on. I uh, don't uh, need to say uh, much more than we as African Americans must never forget our ancestors who are buried here and in our sister cemetery uh, up the road, Mount Olive. Judge mentioned slightly something that we are going to really push hard on, and that is this, which is just a uh, something uh, historic that everyone should be aware of. I want to make sure that you are. Some of you know already that both Mount Olive and Mount Zion were once located on Union Street between First and Second. But when the Woodlawn Group decided they wanted to build a parkway to connect the Brandywine and Union Park Gardens, 
these black cemeteries were in the way. So what did they do? They did what people do when they have money and power. They decided to close the cemeteries and relocate them here and up the road. We must never let that happen again. It happened once. This must be their final resting place. We're not going to let some developer come here and buy this cemetery and move uh, move the bodies uh, to a remote place in the county or lower Delaware. You all are with me, are you not? We're not going to let that happen, right? All right, okay. Uh, Reverend Gaither had to leave and Reverend Bailey is going to give us the um, benediction and then uh, Jerry Ross and Saeed Abui will play taps as we adjourn this ceremony. Reverend Bailey. Please let us all stand and uncover. Precious Father, we thank you for everything that we have accomplished and forgive us for what we have done amiss. And as we depart our several ways, we ask you to keep us in your loving care. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide henceforth now and forevermore. Let us all say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And every soul say amen. amen.